Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Plymouth United Church. We're glad to have you joining us this Sunday. I hope that your week is going well and that your Pride Month is enjoyable um, and that you've got good plans for this coming week right now because we have gathered together intentionally to be in this time together. Let's take a moment to center ourselves, to bring ourselves fully into this time and into this place. This morning, as we begin with the physical aspect of ourselves to become intentional about being aware of it, think about where you feel tense. Where in your body are you holding your tension? And is it some place that you always hold your tension? Or is it new because maybe this is a, a new area of pain or something for you? Think about where it is in your body, how many places in your body it is. And now get in touch with the places in your body that are relaxed. And see if the portion of your body that's relaxed can help move into the tense part of your body. To begin to wash over it and to relax it so that you can be a little bit more comfortable. And maybe you're saying there is no part of my body that is, that is not tense. In that case, allow the essence of yourself to find something in your body. Maybe not your physical self, but some aspect of yourself that has something relaxed or, or maybe look beyond you at something that looks peaceful and let it integrate with your body so that you can feel the calm and the peace of it to give you at least a moment of release from that tension. And likewise, our minds get tense with certain ways of thinking, certain things that we have to think about and maybe we get so focused on those on those things we have to think about that we can't find a way to relax our mind, to soothe our mind. If there's any thinking within you that is relaxed and peaceful, see if it can move into that space of intellectual thinking tension. And if not, what outside of you do you see as peaceful and calm? that you can allow to begin to move your thinking, shifting it, to have a little bit of peace because that little bit of calm and peace can actually help us to deal with the tension, to deal with the concerns. And in the same way, let's do that with our emotions. Where are you emotionally tense? In what way do you feel maybe stuck emotionally or, or riled up? Go back to that place of peace, whether it's something that you have of joy within you that can help to, to calm or to bring peace to that emotional aspect of you, or maybe it again is something outside of you that you can focus on to allow calm not to pretend like hard things aren't happening but instead to let the calm be a foundation for the stuff that's difficult for the stuff that's challenging as you breathe into that and become renewed bit by bit not oh now I'm finally suddenly all better but ah that bit that bit has found a little bit of release how nice is that sometimes that's all we need and how about your spirit where in your spirit do you feel tense or riled up where is there concern in your spirit breathe into that in that same area that you have found peace before and allow this peace to move you to shift you, to 
give you hope and to bring you into a wholeness in your spirit, integrating with your emotions and your mind and your body. And as you do this, take in a breath. And remember that we are doing this work together. We are having this moment together. We are co-creating this sacred and holy moment as we bring ourselves fully to this time and to this place. join me in a responsive call to worship. This month, we celebrate the diversity of families. We thank you, God, that you have created us differently. We find unity together as a diverse family of faith. All love comes from God because God is love. This month, we celebrate the diversity of gender identities and expressions. We thank you, God, that you have created us differently. The expansive nature of your creation is a gift and a marvel. It is beyond our understanding and a delight to experience. We rejoice in the kaleidoscope adventure of life. We praise you, for we are all wonderfully made. Time with the children! Hey kids, how are you doing? What's going on? Are you having a good day? Did you have a good week? Are you looking forward to the week coming up? Tell me all about it. Um, I'd like to hear about it. Today, uh, we're going to talk about the things that we think about and the things that we feel and, um, and how we go about thinking and feeling. So, like, do you spend a whole lot of time thinking about what you're afraid of or thinking about what makes you really mad? Because when you do that, a lot of times you get more and more and more and more afraid or you get more and more and more and more angry, or you get more and more and more whatever it is that is going on that you're just going over and over and over in your mind. And so one of the things that we can do is we can say, I need to think about something wonderful. I need to think about something beautiful. I need to think about something that's fun. But how in the world do you remember when you're in the middle of thinking and feeling in a way that you just get more and more and more and more, how, how do you stop that? Well, I'll tell you that um, there are some things that you can do. For instance, one of the things that I do is I make sure that I have uh, pictures that I really like. And sometimes that reminds me that there's something fun or beautiful in the world. Or... Sometimes when I'm going through a particularly hard time and I know that I'm going through a hard time, 
because I can't stop thinking about something that's difficult or, you know, the, the feeling of something just keeps coming back around to me and I can't seem to think about other things or feel other things. I'll put notes to myself on a mirror or I'll put the note in the car or not a long note because I'm not reading while I'm driving, like a word, just a word that reminds me of something that I love something that I care about, something that makes me happy. And you can do that too. You could draw a picture of something that you really like. Or you could, what else could you do? See, this is where it would be really nice to have you right here because I would ask you, what could you do? Can you think of anything that you might have? And you would come up with ideas. Then you would share them with me and you would share them with everybody else and we'd all have some really great ideas. So I want you to think about what those ideas might be. What could you put in kind of in the way of your life? What could, you, what could you imagine that would help to inspire you to get out of those bad thoughts, to get out of those bad feelings? Not to pretend that they don't exist and that fears don't exist because we know that they do, but so that we don't get, uh, if I say mired down, that's, that's a word, isn't it? Mired means kind of like, have you ever ridden a bicycle and the chain falls off, and the pedals go round and round and round and round and round and round and round, but you don't go anywhere. That's kind of like what being mired down is. And you don't want to get mired down and all that negative stuff. You want to be able to pull yourself up and to say, I can deal with this hard thing. And sometimes we need to be encouraged to do that. So imagine what you might do, and you could even put it in the comments here, or you could, I don't know, ask your your the people in your life that run Facebook for you to post something, um, you can send me an email or a text and tell me what you're thinking about that you're going to put up to help inspire you. And I'm really looking forward to hearing those. Um, so would you join your hearts with mine in prayer? Oh God, we know that all of our emotions are really valuable and that sometimes when we're afraid, we need to be afraid because... Well, something is scary and we need to be cautioned to not do that. But sometimes we get all caught up in the negative stuff. Help us. Help us to remember beauty. Help us to become inspired and remember hope. Remind us that your love is the most wonderful thing in the whole world and that your love that we get to share with each other is also the most wonderful thing in the whole world. And that the more that we share with each other good things, the more good things we'll remember actually exist in the world. Thank you for everything that is wonderful and beautiful and hopeful. We love you, God, and we know that you love us. And all God's people said, Amen. Today's biblical witness is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 2 through 9. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel. Together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which suppresses all understanding, will guard your hearts, your minds, in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is an excellence and if there is anyone worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Thank you.
in the midst of pain I choose love in the midst of pain I choose love in the midst of pain sorrow falling down my brain I will wait the sun again I choose love The hauntingly beautiful song you just listened to was written by Mark Miller. Mark said, I wrote this song using Lindy Thompson's lyrics to convey our deep anguish and hopefulness over the Charleston tragedy. The Charleston tragedy that he's speaking of happened at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina. The church is affectionately known as Mother Emmanuel. On June 17th, 2015, six years ago, last Thursday, a young white man was welcomed into their midweek service. He pulled out a gun and took the lives of nine African-American people. He left a few alive to tell the story. He was unremorseful about his actions. The next night, Chris Singleton, the son of Sharona Coleman Singleton, one of the victims, proclaimed, Love is stronger than hate. Many of the people from Mother Emmanuel professed their forgiveness amidst their grief. On June 21st, 2015, just a few days later, Mark Miller posted his song, I Choose Love. It was on his YouTube channel. You can still see it there now. He called it a prayer. He posted it again, July 14th, 2016, with a guest singer saying that the song was on his heart because of, quote, what's going on in our world. A lot was happening in 2016. For example, June 12th was the Pulse nightclub tragedy. July 6th was the date that Alton Sterling was shot by Louisiana police in Baton Rouge and Philando Castile was shot by police in St. Paul, Minnesota. Additionally, June 19th is celebrated as Juneteenth. According to Juneteenth.com, a website that I encourage you to go to, it says Juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. From its Galveston, Texas origin in 1865, 
the observance of June 19th as the African American Emancipation Day has spread across the United States and beyond. How does this connect with Pride Month for LGBTQ plus peoples? In one sense, all of this is totally separate. The issue we have in the United States around systemic racism is something unique and to be respected for exactly what it is. As a white person, I listen to my black and brown siblings regarding their experiences, knowing that I will never fully be able to understand the barriers, concerns, and fears they have for themselves and their families. At the same time, prejudice of all kinds has overlaps. We can all learn from one another and relate to each other in various ways while maintaining our unique position and perspective. As a trans man and a queer person of the Christian faith, the prejudice I experience and concerns I live with are unique to me and also have some commonality with all prejudice and oppression. When I hear Mark Miller and Lindy Thomas Thompson's song, I Choose Love, my heart and mind go to the writing of Paul to the Philippians. Paul has a concern for the community there, the leadership, two women who have worked together for a while, as well as they've worked with Paul, these two women are at odds. Not only that, but Paul addresses a larger concern. There seems to be general anxiety. This might be because their leadership was strained, or, or simply maybe the community was weary. Regardless of the reason, Paul encourages them to make choices, to not let their emotions and situations rule their behavior, they're at risk of becoming entrenched in negative momentum. We are susceptible to this as well. It takes energy and intention in the midst of crisis, calamity, or conflict to stay positive. Paul gives us ideas on how to do this. And while it's good for our mental health, he's suggesting it as a spiritual practice. We talk all the time about how these different types of practices integrate within us toward us being more whole. It also helps us to create stronger and deeper communities. This section of Paul's writing begins with his concerns for his friends and leaders of the community in Philippi, Euodia and Syntyche. As he moves through his thoughts about this, he encourages the community to not become entrenched in negativity. He tells them, rejoice. He tells them to remember their purpose in ministry, to not worry, but instead to think about Think about what's commendable. Think about what's pleasing, honorable, true, pure, and just. He isn't just suggesting this for their individual daily devotions. He's talking to them as a community. Do this as a community. Their talk amongst each other should be uplifting. They should sharpen each other like a knife on flint through inspiration around the honest and good things in their life together. They aren't to make things up. He's not suggesting they kid themselves about what's going on, but to speak to each other about what is true and about what is just. To remember what is commendable about each other and so on. All of this creates a new environment, one that will support Euodia and Syntyche as they continue to figure out how to regain their sense of being of one mind together, of doing ministry together to renew their friendship, which will renew the community. This is a benevolent cycle, which is kind of the opposite of a vicious cycle. You know, a vicious cycle is, is a landslide toward negativity. You give in to the gravity and all goes downhill. A benevolent cycle, that takes cultivation, but there is a harvest of sweet fruit at the end. I believe this is what Pride Month is all about. It's a time to renew ourselves, to inspire each other by what is good, by what is true, what is honorable, pleasing, commendable. Through the year, LGBTQ plus folks and our allies live our lives and celebrate the good things in them, while at the same time we fight against prejudicial legislation, lift up the names of loved ones and strangers who are harmed or killed, and generally push against the status quo. It can get tiring, to say the least. It's important work. People of faith often consider it a kind of ministry 
with our noses to the grindstone day in and week out, there is no wonder that sometimes we get caught up in the short-term goals and battles. We need leaders like Paul, like Mark Miller and Lindy Thompson to remind us of the big picture, that we are doing this work, this, this ministry together, and as we do it together, over and over, we are choosing love over hate and fear. We are choosing togetherness of mind, togetherness of heart. Battles and disappointments are real. Tragedy is real and true. These are things that we must think on, but they aren't the only things. Each and every day, in order to look straight in the eyes of these difficult truths over and over, we must choose love. In order to rise above the calamity, we must choose love. We must think about what is commendable and pleasing. Joyful resistance means living more fully and living into the truth of God's love and grace and hope. Pride Month reminds us of the importance of celebration and the truth of our inherent worth. Each and every year, we take this opportunity to shift our momentum toward benevolence and life. My hope is that each year, we are a little closer to living in that momentum longer and more deeply. It is written that weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes in the morning. The more we make choices for love, even in the midst of pain and anger, the more we live in love, and the sooner we can find joy. And with that, I leave you peace. Would you join your hearts with mine in prayer? Holy love, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for the choices that we get to make even in the midst of difficult times, in the midst of, of struggles, we thank you that you show us different ways to make choices for, for life and to seek out beauty like it's a long-lost treasure. Help us to live in each moment the way that you have called us to live. And beyond that, oh God, today we, we celebrate Father's Day. And we thank you for all the fathers and the father types that have been in our lives, who have shown us how to make these kinds of good choices, who have helped to turn our thinking or our momentum around, who have gone out of their way, to bless us with their own joy, even when they were in the midst of something that they might have been struggling with. We thank you for, for fathers and father figures who, who lead the way because they see a future. Help us to see a future too, a good future, a bright future, one where we where we learn how to find what is pleasing, where we learn what truly is commendable, and where we lean on each other for that kind of joy and for that kind of experience. You've created this community and communities like it so that we could support each other, so that we could prop each other up sometimes and remind each other of good things. And so, we thank you. And because, because you have called us to community, much like Paul wrote to the people in Philippi, that they were to do that work together, and that they were to speak words of encouragement together, we lift up our voices this day, saying these words of prayer together. Holy One of Blessing, Eternally, we co-create ourselves in your love. All companionship orientations, all gender identities and expressions, all ways of having family. We celebrate this Pride Month for LGBTQ plus peoples everywhere, knowing that many are still not safe to come out, to be free, to live life abundantly. 
Heal all who are ill in body, mind, heart, or spirit. Bind up all wounds and provide adequate care. Extinguish any stigma people are enduring. This month, we celebrate because everyone should be celebrated. We are your body on earth. May our love and hope be sent on the wings of this prayer to all who need refreshing, affirmation, and love's embrace. May it be so. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is celebrating Pride Month, which is a lot of pride. Shelby Mack and I are bringing you the announcements this morning. However, Shelby has decided that it's nap time and not work time, so you get just me. So tonight at 7, we're celebrating the summer solstice with a labyrinth walk and drum circle. The labyrinth is always open for you to walk in, but it is a special time when we gather to walk it as a community. If you have a drum or a rhythmic instrument, we hope you will bring it and join in. If you don't, there will be instruments available. And bring a chair. We hope to celebrate the longest day of the year with you. We are organizing to be able to begin meeting in person again. But before we do, we need to finish a few of our construction projects. Until then, there are opportunities for you to gather with folks on Zoom. Sunday mornings at 10, before the service streams on Facebook, we meet for a time of fellowship. And on Wednesday evenings at 6.30, we have our book study group. You can find the links of these in our new app, in our Thursday Thoughts, or on our Facebook page. Speaking of the new Plymouth app, please go to the app store on your phone or tablet and search for Plymouth United UCC. You will recognize our app because of our great logo. It is still a work in progress, but the basics are there. Through the app, we will be able to find all of our events, our services, and other information. We are interested in your feedback and the way you imagine the app to be helpful as a ministry of the church. It is also the place where you can centralize your giving to Plymouth. Once we have the app fully operational, we will begin to phase out Thursday's thoughts. Our hope is that we will have a more robust way to engage with each other and to share what is going on at Plymouth. Many of you have been giving through our push pay, which is great, which is the giving portion of our app. The company has made a change to the texting number that we are using. This is because carriers are no longer going to be supporting the use of the shorter numbers. Starting this month, if you use the text to give feature, please use 832-245-8480. This number will be on the screen during our offertory moment. If you give through our new app, you don't have to worry about the number. We have been receiving quotes from plumbers to repipe the church. Nothing has been determined yet. We have also had electricians out to talk about our electrical issues. It turns out that mostly our plugs are old and damaged. The electrical system itself is just fine. So that's the good news. The well for the garden and the scout hut were fixed. Luckily, that was a simple electrical problem. We are now looking into the irrigation system for the lawn, which isn't working. We know many of you have been coming to our online services that we have never met. We can't wait to open the church to be able to see you in person. If you are considering joining Plymouth, please contact Pastor Mac at pastor at PlymouthUnited.org. Each week we collect two offerings. One is for the church, which goes into our general fund for the running of the church and our ministries. The second is the loose offering, which is sent to a designated charity, which changes each week. Our loose offering for today will go to Rainbow Railroad, which is a global not-for-profit organization that helps LGTBQI plus people facing persecution based on their sexual orientation, gender identity, and sex characteristics. In a time when there are more displaced people than ever, LGBTQI plus people are uniquely vulnerable due to systemic state-enabled homophobia and transphobia. 
these factors either displace them in their own country or prevent them from escaping harm. As a result of Rainbow Railroad, more LGBTQI plus individuals will be able to access lives free from persecution. We are still collecting for our systems upgrade campaign. If you're interested in giving to this campaign, you can do so in any of the ways that you give to Plymouth. While the amount we need is substantial, if you have a small amount you can give at regular intervals, that will help. If you would like to give to our general fund, to the loose offering, to the systems upgrade campaign, or all of them, you can use bill pay from your bank, send us a check, or use push pay according to the directions on your screen. As always, thank you for supporting Plymouth and the ministries of the loose offering. We are all one human family. In your love, you created us. Through your grace, you reach out to us. You are great enough to hold us all in your arms at the same time. Help us to open our hearts to the world that you love. Teach us to weave our lives together. We yield to the Spirit, offering what we have to the greater good. In this way, each day, we begin again in love. And now, my friends, it is time to go from this moment to whatever it is that you have next. May you be blessed. May you be blessed with surprises from God that, that help to, to get you out of any negative momentum that you might be in. Something like a, a giggle from a small child in a grocery store when you can't find that item that you're really looking for. Or maybe a clever sign in someone's yard that makes you laugh when you're in the middle of a, a traffic jam. May you be surprised by, by beauty, by loving kindness. And may you be open to it with your whole heart as we make the shifts that we do need to make in each of our lives so that we can live in that joy, so that we can live in hope, in order to keep doing the ministry and the work, to keep looking straight in the eyes of the problems and the challenges. May that promise of future, may that hope in something better and the truth of the connecting parts of us that are really, really good together, 
abide within you and help gain momentum in you as we continue to collaborate, creating the kingdom of heaven here on earth, this big, beautiful world that we call home. Go forth in peace and as peacemakers.